It's a beautiful sunny May day here in Austin. It's about time for me to go take a run around Town Lake. But before that time, let's talk about the time on our waveform charts and graphs. Because so far, in both of them, we have time across the bottom, 0 to 99 or 0 to 100 as the default shows. But is it really time? And what are the units of this time? Well, really, it's not time. These are samples. Each sample we get shows up as a point on the x-axis, and the delta between each point is 1. Of course, our y-axis is the actual value of the data we're receiving, whether from the random number function or the sign data. It's called time by default because our waveform charts and our waveform graphs always receive time at a consistent interval. So it's correlated to time, but the time may not be an exact delta of 1, and it may not even start at 0. Now it's harder to manipulate those values with the waveform chart, but the waveform graph makes it really easy for us. I'll bring my context help over. And we see down here, combine timing information using a bundle node. So here's a bundle function, and we have three inputs coming in, an x naught, delta x, and y array. Since those are on the x-axis, we can also think of those as t for time. But in other words, this is the initial x or time. This is our delta t or our delta x, and then the actual array of data. So let's do that. First, I'll just do it on a single plot. Get rid of this too, and then quick chop's helpful again here. Select that build array function, control space bar, control R, and it gets removed and wired in its place. Thank you again, Darren Nettinger, creator of QuickDrop. So let's put some timing in here. Give me a little more space. And we'll quick drop in a bundle function. Control I again. And as we saw in the context help, three inputs, where the bottom one is the Y array, and then two scalar doubles. I'll head to my numeric palette, double numeric. This one will be my T naught. Let's say that my application actually starts recording data 10 seconds in, and then I get new data every half second. I'll run it again. Now we can ignore the waveform chart for now. I ran it again so you see different values here. I'll make this bigger. And as we look at the display, we'll decrease the number of data points to make it even more obvious. We see that we start at 10, and each new data point is separated by 0.5. We can go a step further if we like and make a multiplot display as we did before. I'll just copy this. And maybe the timing's different here. Maybe on this sensor, I start at 5, and I'm back to 1. As before, we'll need a build array. Run it. Now admittedly, that's kind of a weird display because essentially we've locked ourselves into using the same number of data points, but with a different frequency and starting at different times, which is probably not common. What may be more common is that we have one sensor coming in at a different frequency, which over the same period of time would probably mean more points. So let's mock up something like that. We'll come over here to our code. And incidentally, I've left this here for a while. It wasn't necessary for all the way from graph and chart manipulation we were doing out here. Now to create another array with a different number of points, I could just create another loop. Get rid of all this down here. And let's say this loop runs 100. This loop runs 150. Not the cleanest code right now, but let's take a look at it. So we see that we can have different sensors with different numbers of points, frequency, and starting times on the same graph. The trick to remember here is that the data coming in will always be displayed in equal increments across the x-axis. But what if I have data coming in that's not equal increments? Or to broaden the question, what if I want to display two arrays against each other? instead of having always one array of data displayed against time, which are samples. Well, that's where the XY graph comes in, and we'll take a look at that next time. 
because like I said, it's time for me to run. It's a beautiful day. And we do courses here in Austin. You should come and visit and spend five days learning LabVIEW with one of us. Check out the next course on the schedule at sixclear.com slash regionals.